Welcome to Jamaica, my friend. And welcome to my kitchen. It's from me to you. Thanks Actually, very much. Kitchen, fried chicken, plantain, coleslaw, and rice and peas. You know the vibe. Show the people the bit. There you have it, the fried chicken, the oxtail, the plantain, the rice and peas and coleslaw. Try it out, let me see what I go on my jay. Wagwan, wagwan, what's great? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome and thank you very much for stopping by. My name is Chef Adrian Morris and you're watching Morris Time Cooking. Me know about sardines, mackerel, yeah. chicken neck, yeah. chicken back. Yeah. Not on our waist, not on our dash way. Right now, we don't know we're in Jamaica. Raja said we never cook game yet and thing and thing. So, I'm saying what? Oxtail, see? So, oxtail is not new to the channel. You've been seeing oxtail over the years on the channel. But today, I'm going to cook some oxtail. So, let's do a little freestyle because long time we're going to get a video. I'm going to do some planting. We just run down the supermarket and the market. Get some planting, get some scotch bunnies, some lime, some green. No more green. Some uh, thyme, fresh thyme. Get a carrot, you see me? Get some oil. Mommy have them stuff, but I'm just buy some little extra for add to it. Get some soy sauce. Get some ketchup, you see me? Get some broad bean for the oxtail. I'm going to make a coleslaw. So get some vinegar. And we get some milk and mayonnaise, see? And of course some seasoning. Butter and peas. And right over here, so now, we have the, have the oxtail and the chicken. So I gotta do some brown stew oxtail and some fried chicken. So I'm gonna we have a pound of peas. This is how they sell it in the market. Yeah. Just I do a quick thing and go up on the road this morning. Go wash it here and take a long time, you know. So first you want to rinse off the peas. Wash off the excess dirt. Now we still. This piece is not dirty, so that's good. Show off the dirty water. It's not that dirty. It's a little bit dirty water. And again. Typically we get this done from a Sunday afternoon, from a Saturday night. Make the piece soak, but as I said, just went and buy everything. So I'm just gonna fold this up, cover the piece. Need some garlic, right? Okay? Alright, so that's enough, about three and a half cup of water. Stove. Salt. So you salt the piece good enough, so about a tablespoon and a half of salt. Nice and salty because we're gonna add more water and coconut milk. Yeah, a few grains of pimento berry. About four garlic cloves. I'll just cut them up. Nice little piece of the fresh thyme. Wash everything, no dirty parts. You know, so we're going to put half the amount of um, thyme for now and then half later. This is not the right cover, but Jamaica will just use anything to cover the thing once you fit. So we'll cover that, let the water boil up. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so as I said, we're making a Jamaican dinner. Quick and fast. My friend Raja is here with me. From Canada, visiting Jamaica for the first time. Go and check out the vlogs on Morris Time family. You see what I say? So let's yes, make him some dinner. My mom would normally be doing the cooking on a Sunday, but she's not here, so you don't know. I have to take over, right? So the peas is on the stove, as I'm gonna say. Just went and got everything. I was just gonna say I cook along with Morris Time cooking, you know what I say? Yeah. So let's do some planting now. Boom. Just a prep up everything. Normally I do these from like the night before, but I just go buy it as I'm say. Prep up everything. So 
So the planting is out the way. Carrot. Oh, the peel here. Dig deep, man. Yeah, that's that. You plant here so that's just bitter. Carrot are overgrown. Some carrot for the um, ox tail. I tell you, if you spread the bread, bro. before the oxtail. Oxtail is still in the sink but I want to get the vegetable going first. You see what I say? Get everything prepped for the vegetables. So we have a cabbage, a organic cabbage in it. So them look and look and them look and have a lot of imperfections you know it's a the real deal of the island. You see? No only for chemicals they are fresh off the farm. Very small. I don't you see small cabbage like this in the country if you're overseas. It's so the, 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 the organic thing, you know? Put a bit of salt. So we use the salt water to wash it off. Get out any um, unwanted insect extra debris of the cabbage as well as if there is any rawness because I know people touch it with their hands in the market so you want to use the salt and wash it to get it cleaned up you see me? you can use a little bit of um, you call it? a little bit of vinegar as well, wash it Automatic, wow. No. <laughs> Say, automatic. Ready? Ready if I get my guy? Come. All right. So quick coleslaw. The leaves are shredding this one.
get some carrot. Onion. We have a piece of onion. Use the same small part of the grater to grate that. Get a little salt, nothing too much, about a quarter teaspoon. Little bit of black pepper, about an next quarter teaspoon. Oh, that one had a rough one. This is the big green salt, but black pepper, but just do this one. Just don't use a quarter teaspoon, nothing too much. About a quarter cup. With over a quarter cup. sugar, so we're going to go into some brown sugar, about two tablespoons. You like the coleslaw sweet? You like coleslaw sweet? Alright. Little bit. Alright, Some whole milk. I'll use about a quarter cup. Let's finish up the coleslaw, but just a moment. Get some cold water. And then for the peas now, so you realize the peas now, you're floating to the top, right? You get some cold water and we're going to submerge these underwater. So real fast, sorry. I realize everything sink. What we're going to do now at this point, give that a stir. This rice and peas is going to be nice and red. And then give it a taste. Want more salt. Need a half tablespoon because I like to see I like to salt this one time. We're just gonna pressure this for about half an hour or until they're tender. So once this is done, then we're gonna use that pot to do the ox tail. Gonna add a little bit of vinegar, about a quarter cup. And then we mix. Normally I like to add a little bit of chopped apples. I grated apples in my coleslaw, but I don't have any apple. Great those sugar particles, as I said, I prefer the white sugar, but I don't have any, so use the brown sugar. Mix that in nicely. You have more cabbage, you could have used more cabbage, you know. You get a KFC style of running. So I just transfer this to a smaller container and just sit this in the fridge until we're ready to serve. All right, the coleslaw running. You know what I say? If you don't like it running, you can add more cabbage to that and put it in the refrigerator. So for the axe here now, we have three pounds. Just gonna wash it. I wanted to do the vegetables first before I started on the axe here. Because I don't like to mix my vegetable and axe here on this board at the same time. Alright, so this doesn't need much cleaning up as you can see. I got the frozen axe steel. Don't need a lot of clean up. We just want to take off a bit of the fat. Not everything. Because you need a bit on there to render and give you flavor. And render means to just break down the fat. Yeah, this is a lot of fat right here. I ensure to ask the butcher to give me the younger cut because the older the ox, the tougher the meat. So I want to get the younger ox. And how you can tell if the ox is young, the meat is red. And if the meat looks grey, that means it's old. You know what I say? Yeah, if you get the meat and it doesn't look bright red. That means the, 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 the ox or the cow 
is an old cow. An old cow, hard for chew. Is it? Yeah, man. So I have two lime. So before I cut my lime, I like to roll them out. That gets the, the pulps burst inside, so you have more juice. So you roll out the lime. Boom. There's a juice for this. And you squeeze. So why we use the lime? We use the lime to wash the meat clean, to remove any raw odor. You know what I mean? I say remove any dirt or debris from the meat. Yeah. Then we're gonna go in with some white vinegar. About a quarter cup. And then we're gonna rinse the oxtail. Get them nice and wash and clean. Alright, so we'll throw off that water. And before you come for me about the sink and the raw meat and the bacteria, listen, once we've done clean this meat, we're gonna rinse out the sink, wash it with soap water, and all of that good stuff. You see? So once you throw off that bloody water with all the lime and the vinegar, then we're gonna go in and rinse off with some fresh water. That's to get the excess taste of the um, lime and vinegar off your meat. Throw that off. Third rinse. That's it. This one's soap on here. So I just want to use some all-purpose seasoning, whichever brand of your choice, I'll go in it about two tablespoons, two to two and a half tablespoons, well seasoned. Yeah. Some black pepper. So we need it to have that spice in there. Not too much about a one teaspoon. I'm gonna go with a tablespoon of soy sauce. I was trying to get oyster sauce, but I couldn't get any. Burnt sugar, I'm gonna use about one tablespoon. Five garlic cloves. I'll wash that. Don't worry about the sink, you know. I'm gonna clean it out once you finish. In here. I'm gonna use half of a white onion which put them in julienne strips. Cut by the pepper, just squeeze it. And a few pimento berries. What the pimento berry does is to give it flavor as well as to help to tenderize the meat. That's why we use the pimento berry. I'm just gonna go in and massage the meat. As I said, I normally put oyster sauce, but I don't have any. So it's not a must. And this right here, typically, you would want to do this overnight or at least an hour minimum to marinate properly. But because, as I said, just went out to the store and grab it, so you won't have enough time to marinate. Probably half an hour because we have the peas cooking, and once the peas are pressured, we're just gonna switch the pot, add these in, and then we're good to go. So we're gonna transfer this now to a smaller container because I'm not working with much containers here. See that will look nice and pretty. Yeah. And we're just gonna put it in the fridge to marinate for about 30 minutes. So we'll do fried chicken now. Because actually not enough, you know it is. Sundays in Jamaica are normally two meat day. Alright, so we Clean up our chicken. Yep. You clean out the crevices of the bone. Get out all those debris, blood clots, 
Then time come to make a two sigo, you know. I realize they don't like me. Then time come to make a yard with sleep out. And your boyfriend yard and top where they work. <laughs> For the fried chicken you now, once you have the thigh, this is a bit frozen because I just buy them, right? Once you have the thigh, you hold the bone like this and you hold down here, you crack that. Boom. This is that bone right there. This is why Thai meat takes so long to cook because that bone have all the blood when you fry your chicken. So you break that, snap that, and you push it back in place. So once you fry the chicken, it fries nicely and there's no blood left in the middle of the chicken. You see? So your Thai will cook quicker next time. Get my cooking book, my style Christmas recipe. And them something like the family can cook for your family for Christmas. Grab yourself a coffee. Give it as a gift to a loved one. You have fruit cake for this. I'm buying it in them already to make my fruit cake. I have my fruit so I bring it from Canada so you know the vibe. Like, comment, share, hit subscribe. Come on. So scrape off that. See sometimes you have a little bit of feather on there so you want to clean that up properly. So you just use a like a brush motion with a knife and you just take that right off easily. No pressure. Boom. Nice and clean, you can eat this down to the bone, you see? Yeah. So we're going to go in with some vinegar, white vinegar, about a quarter cup again. That's how we clean our meat in Jamaica. Vinegar and lime with water. So done. Jump forward. So squeeze some lime. I'll use two lime, nice and juicy. Yes, sir. Wash off all that debris. One thing though, I don't like the fact that these are frozen, man. Hopefully, they shall. I'm gonna put them in the freezer. So I season them, leave them on the counter top. I'm gonna put this in the fridge because I stop it. Turn on. Give that a second ring to get off the excess um, taste of the vinegar. I don't have no hand towel. Normally, if I have paper towel. I pat dry these to the nice and dry, but unfortunately I don't have any. So come now, seasoning. All purpose seasoning again of your choice. I'm gonna go in because this is about three pounds, not about, this is three pounds of chicken. So we're gonna use one and a half tablespoon of all purpose. I have my, yeah, let's go. Boom, boom. Of course, fried chicken have to have some black pepper in a bit. You see me? And the chicken is spicy, it's nice. So a teaspoon of that in there. And a scotch bunny pepper. My secret to scotch to fried chicken one. Normally I'd have this blended. You know what I say? And as I said, for best results, um, season and marinate overnight. And I would want these to chop finer than this. But as I said, I'm just gonna work with what we have. There's a little bit of oil on here to help us to massage it in good. So we're going to with a with a teaspoon of garlic powder. Typically I'd add some onion powder, but I don't have any at the moment. And a splash, or not a splash, but if it's splash powder. <laughs> Those sprinkling powder and this is paprika powder. So we're gonna Add one teaspoon of paprika, smoked paprika. Give that color as well as some added flavor. That is smoked, my boy. All right, so we're just gonna season this up. Rub that thing. Okay, these were cold, so we'll leave them out on the countertop. And because it's last minute, 
You want them to marinate for at least half an hour. So this is what we do when we cook chicken. When we wash clean chicken in our sink. You soak it down fully, fully. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The cutting board is already bleached. So we wash this already and we spray bleach on there. That's how we do it. So we rinse this out and then we spray bleach and let it sit. Beautiful. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. That's what you want. Cooked. So we're gonna transfer this now. Let me taste that first. Because it's cooked now with the salt and everything. So add that to a separate pot. It's red and nice that is. Nice. This one. And then back onto the stove. Light that up. Cover with a lid. And then come to a boil again. Our pot. Pressure pot, gonna add some oil, about two tablespoons. So hot pan with oil, and we're gonna sear these off on both sides. Okay, we sear this to trap all that flavor in there. Yeah, and don't overcrowd it because it will now steam. We don't want them to steam. We want them to sear. So you just put enough you know, in the pan. Don't overcrowd it because overcrowding will let it. It's steam, we don't want that. So four pieces. So about two to three minutes, once it's nice and seared, you flip that over. You want to get a nice crust on there. You see that nice crust? Yeah, that's what you want. Flip it over and we're just going to repeat that for about two to three more minutes. That's the color you want to see on there. And you can make it go for a little bit longer. So the nice crust on it. We're going to prepare the coconut. You can use a powdered coconut or use a fresh coconut. We like the fresh coconut. And you're going to say, how is that fresh? It's fresh. We just grate it. Mommy just cut it up and grate it and freeze it, right? So just drop that in here. Add some water. Put it all the way up. Boom. And we're just going to blend that out. Live your life on the edge. So for the coconut, we're just going to strain that out. To get all that nice juice. Alright, when I make my rice and peas, I have to use a bit of the trash in there. Drop in the rice, you know what I say? That get it nice and my gas just finished. You know <laughs> gas always finish on Sunday. <laughs> I don't know why. So we just call the gas man. But in the meantime, this is the blended coconut. We're gonna add that to the piece. Mm -hmm. Just like so. Nice. So just gonna put some butter, the pound butter. Use about a two tablespoon, you know what I say? Nice and buttery, you know. Yeah. So the butter in there. Put some fresh kelly in there. Some fresh thyme. Everything has already been washed. And we use about one stalk of fresh um, kelly and two stalks of fresh thyme. I have a green bell pepper, not bell pepper. I have a green scotch body pepper. You don't burst that. Leave the stem on. Make sure you wash it. You're gonna add that directly in there. And then a teaspoon of brown sugar. Yeah, man. Don't play with the brown sugar in it. Yeah. Let's give that a stir. And what we're gonna do now, allow this coconut milk to cook in, but unfortunately, my gas is finished. So we're gonna have to let this sit for a while until the gas man comes. But you see how nice that looks? Beautifully seasoned. All that coconut, see the little flakes are in there. Nice. Cover that down. And at this point, I'll be washing my rice. But, man, I'm gonna go wash the rice till the man comes, you know? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wash the rice now.
All right, so we're just gonna wash this, right? We give this two wash to ensure to remove a little bit of the starch, not too much. Yes, you know you can't do this until the water runs clear. But we don't have water in Jamaica like that. Sometimes you leave it like this and it's once the water is clear, you're fine. But it's not that cloudy, so you know it's good to go. This rice is not dirty. So that's the, the seared ox tail, nice and pretty. Now we're just gonna add everything back. Do not wash that out because you're throwing away flavor. Once it's not burnt, you're good to go. So we're just gonna add that with all the juices. Nice. Add everything in. Add water over that. Rinse out the bowl. Add water just enough to cover. So in this case, it's about a two and a half to three cups of water. I'll just cover that up. Scotch. Bonnet pepper. Just like so. We don't need it to be a, a oxtail soup. Just enough water. Because oxtail you want only for gravy. You know? So we're just going to seal the pot and we're going to pressure this for about 30 minutes. Cover this up. My gas is finished as I said. So once the gas is back, turn it on. And then now we're going to go um, pressure this for about 30 minutes. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you're going to cook it for about two and a half hours. With a pressure cooker, 30 minutes pressure to get it tender and then looking at another, another 45 minutes to just cook it down nice and juicy. So after 30 minutes, I'll see you back. My guess is always done for Sunday. Why is Sunday? <laughs> That's that Sunday. Uh, today, I don't want to have a Sunday because I guess the phone didn't go down yesterday. Yeah. I'm going to have a selfie yesterday and today. Busy? No, no, stop. Alright, yeah. mommy, try. I'm going to cook it. I'm going to cook it. Turn on the second one. Second one. Yeah. Up and running. Respect me. Turn on the next one, Taraja. First one. Second one. Next one. Next one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Back at it again. So look at that beauty. It smells so good. All that coconut essence. All the coconut essence. Add the wash rice to that. And it's good. Come feel it. Good. Cover that. 20 minutes. And then once it starts drying down, we're going to turn that stove down. And then we'll steam that up for another 15 to 20 minutes. Get that oh, yeah, nice and fluffy. Alright, so right now. The rice, we're going to steam this up nicely. We turn down the stove and when you see small bubbles like that, that's when you want to add a plastic on it. I know it's very controversial. A lot of persons are saying, they love mummy rice and peas, but I should add um, grease plastic? paper on the top instead. You know what I say? But we use the plastic. This is tradition. We put the plastic on here and that helps to steam up the rice nicely. It will not melt? No, man, it's good, man. No, man. <laughs> yeah, man, it's good. So some people are saying, Maris, some people are saying I should use the grease paper, but this is what we use over the years. We we'll just sprinkle a little water on the top of the bag, help it steam nice, you know. Learn from the mess, you know. Miss Bailey, you know the thing, or AKA my mother. So we're gonna steam this for about 20 minutes at very low heat, minimum, and then after that we we'll remove the plastic and we'll open up the pot a little bit and allow that the custard and the rice to just have to go to get nice and shelly and pretty as may I say minutes has passed, rise up the cover look at that the ramp with the chef you know that matter there we just got to remove that now see all the water has absorbed yep nice look at that so just remove the pepper this is why we keep this just easy pull. And there we go. Nice fluffy rice. You can remove this. Pimento. So we're just gonna fluff the rice now. There we go. Just fluff it up. And once you fluff it up, we're gonna leave it to steam for another 10 minutes without the plastic. Yeah man, it's just not, not really steam like to get that custard from the rice, you know? You see that? What's that gonna do? It's gonna look more sheeny when you're done. Flip that around. You open it a little bit like so. And then the custard from the coconut is gonna get nice and make the rice shelly. Remember, I added a little bit of the coconut flakes, that's gonna help it even better. As I said before, all of these food that I'm making today, I have a video out on the channel individually. Oh, they are Jamaican, I'm a virgin rather, they are Tyrone, they are Mummy, they are Spooky, they are Pinky, they are everybody there. 
Boom. This is a the vibe. This is what I say. So, remember to check out the cookbook, you know. Morris Stan Cooking's Christmas Recipe. Jamaica Christmas Recipe. So, get that out there to your friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Link will be in the description box down below. When the oxtail is done, I'll show you what that looks like. Just waiting on the pressure cooker and then we're going to fry up some chicken. And we're good to go. So I'm going to transfer this to another pot because what is happening is this pressure cooker is not working as well. So transfer to another pot. We'll still have 15 to 20 more minutes to go. Alright, so we're going to fry some chicken now. Add some oil to the pot. I'm going to use about 3 cups of oil, 2 and a half to 3 cups of oil. Fry this chicken nice and crispy. I'm just going to let this heat up for about 5 minutes or so to come to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. After which, we'll bread the chicken, fry them up nice and crunchy. Alright, so we're going to fry the chicken, season up with a little bit of all purpose. Come on, man. Just a little bit, not a lot. Little bit of black pepper. I'm just gonna mix that. So now grab our chicken flour, pull down the skin, flour. Always pull back the skin because that's where you're gonna get that nice crispy. So that's well seasoned. Nice. And then we're just gonna break. So you give it a nice little toss. Get that fully coated. Press it down. Alright. Shake off the excess flour. Get that in the water. I don't use I use milk sometimes. Most times I use the water. Pick that back up. Drain the excess. Back in the flour. Oil is already heated to 350, 325, sorry. I will give that a second bread. Press that down to get all the seasoning there. Nice. Yeah, man. You pull the skin if you have any beer spots, you squeeze that on there. Because you know it's fried chicken. You pull that skin down gently. Grab your hand. Fill your hand with some flour, squeeze it onto the chicken. Top it off. Top it off. Beautiful. And it's gonna go into our hot pile now. Like so. Like so. Yeah. You don't want to damage all of that flakes. You make this fire for about two minutes, then you can stir it and sink everything down into the oil. So this is something that mommy teach me over the year, you know what I say? Once you finish cook the rice and peas, close the pot properly, put it in some water. Don't let the water come above because you don't want the rice to flood out with water. Just enough water to cool down the pot. And what that will do is to prevent the rice from sticking to the bottom of the pot. Try it out, let me know if it works. Leave a comment in, in the comment section and let me know if you did this before and it worked for you. That's what she's been doing over the years. And how long do, would you ask? I leave this in there. For about two minutes because you don't want to get the rice cold, you know what I'm saying? Mommy? Yeah. You alright? Mm -hmm. Oh. I mean, so I leave this in there for two minutes and then we're good to go. Chicken is frying up. Hopefully that oil rise up. Yo, the oil is getting too cold man. The oil. Oh that's slow, that's slow. Huh? I said slow. Hey bro, you want to start up the fried chicken man. Alright, so the ox here. Pull that down. Let's 
That's good. Oh, that up. Beautiful. First thing you want to do, you want to remove these dried thyme stick. We got the flavor from them. We don't need it. Alright, so we're going to taste that now. Always taste. Taste the sauce. Alright. A little bit of black pepper. A little bit of all-purpose seasoning or meat seasoning. Just a little bit. Like so. Put in a teaspoon in there. I'm going to put about a tablespoon and a half of tomato ketchup. Mix that in. We're going to go in now with our carrots. With our fresh onions. You yeah, need some fresh onion in the thing. So in total, I use one onion, half in the beginning, then half in the end to give it that fresh note. Some fresh thyme again. And then we're gonna put the beans afterwards. Three more cloves of fresh garlic. Stir that up. So we can show you what the meat looks like now. Nice and soft. But we're going to let this cook without the pressure cooker. A little bit longer. So for the for the for the beans, they're already cooked, so we're not going to add them in here just now. We want to cook that carrot a little bit and soften the oxtail. So there we go. Giving this another 15 more minutes. We should be good to go. Chicken is frying up nicely. Yep. I like the fox of the oil. Um, so you see if I make the flakes fall off because it got soggy. You see me? In order to keep the flakes on there, you don't want the oil to cool up. But the flakes. Yeah, I have to change location. I'm going to go by my brother's apartment because, yeah, the oil is my mother's stove is too slow. So it messed up all the flakes off my chicken. Look at that. Alright, so now we're going to add the lima beans and we'll just put this in at the very last minute because these are already pre-cooked from the can. So you just really and truly want to warm them through. So about 5 minutes will do on medium low heat and that will also help to thicken the oxtail. You see what I say? As I said before, a list of all of these um, that dishes that I prepared today can be found individually on the channel. I have a few videos out on oxtail. I also have a few videos out on rice and peas, coleslaw, how to fry your planting, and also fried chicken. So feel free to browse those. And do remember that in the cookbook, I also have these recipes in the Maritime Cookings Jamaican Christmas Recipe Book. You see, my link will be in the description box down below. And that is it. We don't have to add nothing to this. Nice and thick. Just leave this on low heat, as I said, medium low. And about five minutes, we should be golden. Ox still falling off the bone and Raja come like him take off the meat off of the bone. Oh, you yeah, man! Eh? Yeah? You this, eh? Don't make me knock you out, man. You couldn't wait till the thing don't cook, man. I'm not clean up a pocket on you. You take off the meat off, man? Come to dance. Come on, man. Alright, there we go. No, you take off the meat for you? You don't take off nothing, man. You just fall off the bone. Alright, there it is. So it's getting nice and thick. And. Five more minutes and we should be good to go. Just add a little bit of oil, just enough to cover the base because planting don't need that much oil. So it's like shallow fry for planting. Alright, so I didn't get to show you guys when I first started the planting, but planting is pretty straightforward. Um, the trick behind planting to get the perfect plantings, ensure that your oil is hot enough. Do not overcrowd the pot. Overcrowding your pot will result in the plantings becoming soggy and they'll just break up. Second thing to note, when you're cutting your plantings, do not cut them too thin. Too thin will make them break again. You know what I'm saying? And there you go. Just watch them because them say, as you move your eyes off the planting, they burn. So you just want to get a nice golden color like that. And they should be good to go. Because these can be eaten raw when ripe. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. Just going to fry this, as I said, until golden brown. And we're good to go. Alright, Raja, see I've been cooking since 2 30 and it's 7 o'clock now. Gas did gone. You understand? The gas went out. So here we are. Barbecue a few of them. 
You know what I say? Fry some of them. Mommy oil just went down on me. So, mommy stove is not so fast, so it didn't make my chicken flake. But we're here. Rice and peas. Nice. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> More yourself, you can set you up. You need for a man. One time, make it me feed it for a man. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> You can't eat more than this? Want more rice? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Alright. So some rice. See? Yeah, the ox steel. Stir it up a bit. Highly requested by Roger. Still are here. Do I do this one and give them my own? Get some of that sauce. No, I'm telling you, tap me keep a bag of some of my video, young boy. There we go. All right. I don't think, what's one of them? Barbecue or fry? Barbecue or fry, young boy? What? Which one of them? Barbecue or fry? Want both of them right now? No, this is the fry right now. The fry for now? You like leg? Yeah, man. You got fry leg right there. You got a few plantain. This one? All those burn up. Then I burn up a wood. <laughs> and I use that watch it to say if it burn up, I use one of the other one. Alright, that creamy slaw. As I said, you can add more cabbage if you don't want it this creamy. I'll just go right here. Raja like coastline, so that dinner I was requested by Raja, and so we never cooked game yet. So let's see what's happening, my boy. Mm -hmm. So. Welcome to Jamaica, my friend, and welcome to my kitchen. It's from me to you. Thanks Actually, very much. Kitchen, fried chicken, plantain, coleslaw, and rice and peas. You know the vibe. Show the people the There you have it the fried chicken, the oxtail, the plantain, the rice and peas, and coleslaw. Try it out. Let me see what I got. I'm a J. Right, go ahead now, Raja. Hey, oxtail taste. So oxtail do you want in there, brother? Cut it. And big up yourself. Enjoy the meal, my guy. No, I'm speechless. Enjoy the meal, not real life. Father yeah. God, as we come to you, I just want to give you thanks for this day. Thank you for allowing me and Roger to travel safely to Jamaica, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to travel out each day safely. I ask that as we venture out on more activities that you may cover us as we go out and cover us as we come and cover us from all evil people. The violence one at road, Father God. Help us not to be one of the violent ones. But if needs be, help us to protect ourselves, Father God, and our loved ones. I ask that you may give Raja a safe vacation, Father God, and a safe flight back home so that he can resume his life, Father God. I ask that you may cover this house, cover this family, cover Raja's family in the Philippines, in Canada, Father God. Cover each and every one of us at this table. Cover Maxine as we speak right now, Father God, and Eli. I ask that you may cover Tyrone's daughter, Alyssa. All my kids, Father God, Alyssa's family, Mommy's family, my dad's family. Just thank you for providing this meal for us right now. Thank you for the hands that made it. And as we say, Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Never say pinky. Never say pinky, Tyron, are you from now? Oh. Tyron, host, Mr. Lee. So that is it. We are enjoying a nice Sunday dinner. Oh. Good for just sitting and I eat, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to big up Dread. Dread not about, but you don't know that something they go around you. You so link up my boss. Now where you say, so come look for you, is it? I'm going to cook something for you, because from an 11 year old in a tasty hand, is it? Yeah, man. Look up. Look up, look up. First man from the morning. It's very sick, man. Go into the shovel. Mm-hmm. Just cook out for me. My rice got cold. Can't eat cold food, bro.
You see, you know, you know this one. You see how much money in our high school? Then job here. That is it. Just a nice to go humble dinner. We have a lot of fun now. Everybody, tell them all the three boys food, mommy. And nobody tell them like to me. Yes, we do. You first try to ask you? I'm first try to ask you. Two times, anybody take it, I don't eat that still. Um, oh. Okay, our first side taxi. First, I'm gonna eat taxi. Oh. First, I'm gonna eat taxi. What? 100 times. Oh. <laughs> I got the third food. Second time? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's expensive. You know? mm -hmm. ah. You go overseas. Go and log off and enjoy the food. Look up for yourself. Leave a like, comment, and share. I just had a job and I'm going to go for the cell phone as I, you know, it's good, bro. Oh.